I'm gonna clamp. We were out three weeks on the road. A lot of things happened in three weeks. How do you think it went? It went a lot better than I thought. <laughs> in what way? This was our first big trip. A lot more equipment to deal with. New camera setup, new lighting setup. There was going to be some growing pains of trying to find that rhythm. And uh, I think we fairly quickly found it. We went to uh, three cities. Three cities, Philadelphia, DC, and uh, also Boston. In Philadelphia, we interviewed Dennis Colhane, the top researcher on homelessness in the United States. He briefs Congress every year. In a recent study we did, we found that the cost of the shelter system is $10.5 billion a year, about $27,000 per bed per year. But half of the single adults, in fact, slightly more than half of the single adults for the first time last year, they don't even sleep in one of these facilities. It's inefficient. It's ineffective. What hopefully, you know, your film will do is help people understand that maybe society thinks shelters are a solution, but the shelters don't think they're the solution. And the people who stay in them actually think that they're the problem. And in D.C., we spoke with Antonio Fascinelli, the new executive director of the National Homelessness Law Center. Housing not only is the most effective solution to homelessness, it is the most cost-effective solution to homelessness. Shelter was never supposed to be the ultimate solution to homelessness, and people were not supposed to have lived in shelters for long periods of time the way they do now. I actually think that we should not expect more from the shelters themselves. Let them just do that. But the key is there has to be some next step. There has to be a program that's helping people end their homelessness, and that's what is missing. One of my favorite people that we spent time with was, of course, uh, Tomas, the homeless veteran who has been homeless for a couple of years now, and he's about to get a place of his own, probably a lot smarter than both of us. He was actually applying for a job when we met him. He allowed us to stick a microphone on him and let us listen in on the interview. My strength is I'm a people person. I'm very organized. I'm detailed oriented, and I can see a problem from all angles. He killed that interview. He doesn't smoke, doesn't drink. You don't have anything? Nothing. I okay. don't have a high blood pressure or cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you see me, you don't think I'm homeless. I get people that ask me for money every day. And I'm like, and I tell them, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm unemployed and homeless too. And they were like, really? I'm like, yeah. And then they say, you don't look it. He ran into some hard luck to become homeless, but the system conspired against him to keep him out there for a couple of years. I lost my social security card, birth certificate, almost my driver's license, my passport, because it was in a, like, almost like a fanny pack thing, and someone, I fell asleep, and someone grabbed it. Yeah. I kept getting offered jobs, like in Dacom, because they wouldn't, they wouldn't go without me having any of the documents. I just got the medical card literally a week ago, and I started in November. In November of last year? Mm-hmm. November of last year. A, a VA medical card? Yeah, yeah. Come to find out that there was a document that I needed to sign that no one ever gave me. There are so many intelligent people out here, homeless. And it's not based on them not having a desire to, to change their circumstance. It's about finding the resources. The reason why I'm doing this is because I want everyone to know how difficult it can be. We also spoke to uh, Don Whitehead. Donald Whitehead. Donald, yeah, because you were Don, he was Donald. He's the executive director of of the National Coalition for the Homeless, which is the oldest advocacy um, organization in the country. And Donald is a warrior for race equity, which is very relevant right now. 40% of the homeless population are African American. African Americans make up 13% of the general population. You have to target the, the, the um, reason for that as racism structural racism. We're not talking about an individual. We're not saying like everybody in America 
is a racist. What we're saying is there have been structural issues that were put in place way back in the 30s that continue to affect how many people of color enter into the homeless population. Redlining, for instance. So redlining prevented people from gaining home ownership, which prevented people from using the easiest mechanism for wealth in this country. So now you have a wealth gap. Black and brown people are criminally charged at a lot higher rate than their percentage of the population. Until we get to the structural changes necessary, we'll continue to see people cycle in and out of the system. We talked to um, Christy from Pathways Housing First, Housing First program in Washington, D.C. that has been handed 100 people um, to house. As part of this program, when they're closing the camps, they're getting housing, and that's how Tomas is getting housed. The district recently decided to launch a pilot program in, uh, on the encampments to try something different, which was offering people housing who are living in encampments uh, before they close them. If they had a set date to close an encampment to provide really intensive outreach services, but also flexible housing dollars to move people who are choosing housing into apartments. We helped 29 people move into housing in less than six weeks. Decades and decades of homelessness ended in six weeks. We spoke with the director of human services in Washington, D.C., who is responsible for helping to design and implement this program of housing people that are getting um, displaced by closing the camps. The values that our community has adopted in our, you know, and I'm pointing over there because there, there's my, you know, Homer D.C. 1.0, Homer D.C. 2.0, and our other policy documents that guide, you know, that we came together as a community with all of those people at the table to document the strategies where you're going to use are founded in housing first. Look, when people are in housing, everyone benefits. Everyone benefits. The people who are walking down the street and are like, we're putting all this money in, into homeless services, why can I not walk down the sidewalk and I have to walk in the street? Why are people getting murdered under a bridge? And I'm so glad that you're doing this documentary. I encourage them to really listen to the voices of the people who are experiencing homelessness, who are not experiencing homelessness and in housing, um, to listen to them about their journey. We also talked to Anne Marie. Yep, she's a longtime um, lawyer at the Washington Law Clinic that specifically represents the homeless community. And I asked her, why does the homeless community need a law center unto themselves. People experiencing homelessness, people who are low income, people in poverty just generally are not usually treated well by institutions like the courts. Um, and so often to have their voices heard, they need somebody to amplify them and that's what we try to do. You know, if you are a tourist who falls asleep on a park bench, you're not considered to be violating that, that law. Um, if you're someone experiencing homelessness and you are living outside, which there are about 800 people right now who do, um, then you're technically violating the temporary abode law. It's not someone's fault that they're sleeping on the streets. It's almost always because of things that are out of their control. And it's a system that has, you know, caused people to have no choice but to live on the streets. The only way to end Homelessness and, you know, specifically street homelessness is housing, 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 housing. You can't say it enough. And then we also made a stop in Boston. We have quite a few longtime supporters in that city. We had a few events where we were presenting our project to uh, a few groups and uh, try to gain the support for, uh, for the fundraising so that we can finish the making of the film and also the uh, fund the impact campaign afterwards. The first event was great. We were a little bit nervous, so maybe slightly less polished than we, we could have been, but we still did a great job. But the second event, that's where I think it all came together. It was a smaller setting, it was more intimate. And, uh... and Dr. Samson Barris was there to both events, explain to them housing first. He was there to explain it, not to the choir, but to to the general public. You could tell like they were really listening, really paying attention, started asking the right questions. I mean, there was a, one lady that 
when she found out that Pine Street Inn, the biggest well-known shelter in uh, Boston, has been doing housing first for some time now, she was a little bit frustrated that she didn't know about it. Yeah, she was upset that she didn't know, and why don't I know this? And, 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 and we were like, well... And trust me, guys, trust me, guys, we're doing this movie because of that. Yeah. You get the public on board, we're going to solve it. That's that's the deal. That's why we're doing what we're doing. The power of film. Power of film? <laughs> so, great trip, and we want to thank everybody who helped make it possible. Omni Shoreham Hotel in DC, Omni Parker House in Boston, Tuscan Kitchen in Boston for hosting one of the events, Paula and Frank Zavril for hosting that uh, uh, cocktail party. Marine Burns Murtha and John Murtha for their undying support of everything we're doing. And Dr. Um, Samson Bears for coming and speaking. And and Joe Finn um, of the Massachusetts Housing and Shelter Alliance for being undying support um, of us and, and of the film project. And we want to thank everybody who came and supported us at the Tuscan Kitchen event and at Paula and Frank Zerbel's uh, house party. Thanks for uh, going on this journey with us. Stay tuned. All right. Jump. <laughs>